What's up guys? So we're gonna be testing the internal stabilization as well as the lens stabilization. This is kind of what you're gonna expect to see, like the vlog style, quick walking. Just the IBIS and the lens seems to work really, really well. The 15 to 35, by the way, 15 millimeters. It's a pretty heavy setup. I don't expect too many people to be vlogging like this with your arm like fully stretched out just because of how heavy it is. But it does create a great looking image. I'm curious about this wobbling effect. I've been seeing some talk about wobbles. I haven't personally seen it, but we'll, we'll take a look. I'm not controlling my footsteps. This is uneven ground at the park. Nothing too, uh, you know, nothing too steady. Just kind of going with the flow here. Now I also just turned off the lens stabilization and with the lens stage stabilization off, this is what you'll expect if you don't have a stabilized lens and you're kind of vlogging. So any sort of like, any sort of like vintage lens you'll see on here, um, any sort of just unstabilized lens with just the IBIS. You can't turn the IBIS off in the camera. It's really just, you just gotta let the camera do its work, but you can turn off the digital stabilization, which we'll check out in a second. This setup is really hard to kind of keep in one hand for a while. Um, but with the 15 to 35, I mean, you can kind of tuck your arm in to make it more comfortable and you still get like a really nice wide image. How does this look? It's also a pretty challenging scene, so it's good to see the dynamic range here. It's a bright day. I got an ND filter on variable ND. We're on ISO auto. See how that keeps up. Now we have it with the digital stabilization on. Uh, just on, it's not on the enhanced mode. There's also now the lens stabilization and the IBIS. So we have three different internal stabilizations working. And this should give you a really nice shot. Um, if you don't mind like the slight crop that's in there. This is fully outstretched. I think this probably looks pretty good. You're not going to get that full image, especially on this 50, uh, especially on this 15 millimeter. I do wish that this lens had a lock on it, mainly because if you're walking around like this, it does create, it does start to like shift the zoom a little bit. Like I'm starting to creep towards the 20 millimeters, which could be a problem for vloggers if you hold it by the lens. I expect this to be pretty popular especially those who are doing any sort of like real running around kind of like anyone that's a little extra shaky you might want to try the digital IS on with the lens and the IBIS and now we have the uh, enhanced stabilization on you can see the tremendous crop in here I imagine this is probably really smooth So anyone who's looking to like just really smooth out any sort of walking. Is it gimbal-like? I don't know. But I've been extremely impressed with the IBIS, with just the stabilization in general. Even just the optical stabilization in these lenses has been excellent. And I think a lot of people overlook the value of like really good IBIS in a camera. I've been using Sony for a while and it kind of does suck having not the best IBIS, especially when you do any sort of like run and gun like this, but even more so when you have like a long, you know, 100 millimeter, 85 millimeter, even like a 50 millimeter, bad IBIS, you know, it kind of ruins their shots. You can't really, you have to have a tripod. So how's the enhanced with the lens and the IBIS? Hopefully this looks good. So now we're back to just the IBIS and the lens stabilization, no digital stabilization going on. Uh, I'm curious to know, again, 15 millimeters. I also turned off C-Log, where I've also turned off the HQ mode. So we're gonna kind of have a little comparison there to anyone that wants to run basically an unoverheated setup. But this is kind of what you can expect with just a, uh, just the lens and the IBIS working. This ISO auto doesn't seem to really work well. Luckily, if you're a vlogger, you have the uh, 
variable ND, you can just kind of control that stuff. So have we seen wobbles yet? I can't tell on the screen if there's any of those like warpy wobbles. Again, I'm, I'm fully at 15. I can probably pull it in like this close to relieve some like that shoulder pressure. It's not easy. I do want to say I've been shooting all day video yesterday um, and I still have half a battery left. I was also shooting photos. I didn't run into any overheating issues. All day was uh, the, uh, what's it called? All day was the HQ mode. So I have well over 45 minutes of footage. I wasn't shooting like long shots. I was shooting intermittently, maybe a minute to two minutes to five minutes here and there. But I didn't run into any overheating issues. That actually gave me a lot of confidence in that mode, more so than I thought. I don't think anyone's gonna be using it for, uh, you know, long, any sort of long form, but this is kind of what it's gonna look like if you do wanna do any long form shots. We're at two minutes now, um, and this'll go on pretty much forever. I haven't gotten it to overheat yet. And it's hot out. I mean, we're talking 90 degrees out. It's, this has been pretty challenging on this camera, and I really haven't had much of an issue at all with overheating other than the stress test other than the stress test also the shop that I got this from has a grip in and I've been thinking about going and getting the grip uh, to see if that alleviates any overheating I don't think it does to be honest this camera doesn't get hot I think Canon is being extremely um, conservative with their temperatures and their overheating controls so hopefully that gets changed so how does this look? Just lens stabilization and IBIS. I wish there was a way you could turn off IBIS, but we'll see if it's necessary. All right, now this is just with the internal stabilization on. The lens stabilization is off and it's also at 105 millimeters. So I'm using the 24-105 f4L RF mount. Um, just the IBIS, this is a considerably less heavy lens as well. So just the IBIS working. Let's turn on the lens stabilization. Now this is with IBIS and just the OIS. I'm very fascinated to see how well this does. Hopefully I can kind of see the mic peaking. Hopefully it's not too bad. This looks pretty, this looks pretty fucking good, man. This looks pretty fucking good. Now we're gonna turn on the other stabilization methods. We're still at 105, but now we are also um, with the uh, digital stabilization on. It is not enhanced, it is on. So you might see like a slight crop. Obviously this is with the enhanced stabilization turned on. Lens stabilization, body, it's all working full force. You also get a substantial crop on it, but you might want that. I don't know. You're trying to punch in a little bit. You get a little extra added stabilization. I haven't put the camera down, by the way. So my arms are kind of shaking. They're starting to get tired. This looks really fucking good. This is at 85 millimeters. Um, IBIS lens stabilization. No digital. I mean, I think anyone would be happy with just this. This is insane. Again, I'm kind of shaking. Like, I've been holding this outstretched like this for a good amount of time now. This is nuts. At least on the screen. We'll see when I bring it back into the uh, timeline. Here it is with the digital stabilization turned on. Not enhanced. Just on. Very happy with the autofocus as well. And then we're gonna go to the enhanced in a second. 85 millimeters, by the way. We're at 85. And this is with enhanced digital stabilization, internal body stabilization, and lens stabilization. I'm not exactly sure how much better this looks compared to just the uh, digital turned off, because it, it looked really good without it. So I don't know how much better you're going to get out of this with the, you know, the sacrifice of the full frame sensor, basically. So now we're back at 105. The HQ mode is turned on. 
I just wanted to see if there was any quality difference between the IBIS in HQ and non HQ. I am considerably more shaky in this scenario, but hopefully it smooths it out. Hopefully you get a good idea. Also, by the way, that whole, everything was done on that Rode VideoMic Pro through the Canon preamps. Um, I have the Canon preamps turned down uh, about halfway. So you kind of get an understanding of where those are. It, it doesn't seem to have changed much, but I haven't done a full noise test on the Canon preamps on here. Uh, let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in. I'm a huge sound guy. I like to make sure that the sound is good, but I did want to test it with just like a video mic pro. Um, so my final thoughts on the IBIS. This is this camera's strongest point. I mean, the IBIS is so good. When we look at the footage from just the, just the uh, optical stabilization with the IBIS, it looks amazing. Probably some of the best IBIS I've seen. And even without the optical stabilization, this, the, the IBIS looks great. It's when you add that digital stabilization and that enhanced stabilization, it actually did make a much bigger difference than I thought. It's almost gimbal-like. I'm walking, my arms are kind of getting tired, I'm kind of doing a little shaking thing. I'm walking on uneven ground. I'm walking quite quickly, and it, it's so smooth. It just kind of glides with you. This is a vlogger's dream. I think vloggers are really going to enjoy this camera, and it's kind of put into perspective this camera's strong suits. The, I, I mean, my mind is blown at how good the Ibis is, and I'm really kind of confused at how other reviewers aren't showcasing this camera's IBIS. This is like the perfect vlog setup, especially when you factor in that 4K24 and 4K30, just the regular 4K does not overheat. I think my review might be contrary to what a lot of people are saying about this camera. I'm very, very impressed with what we have. Now that's not to say that the limitations of the 4K HQ, which is what you're seeing here, the 4K HQ or the 4K 120 and 60, that's not to say those limitations suck. And of course the 8K, I don't even really care about 8K. If you want me to test 8K, let me know, but I don't really care about the 8K. I'm more uh, concerned about the downsampled of it. But sure, the limitations of that of that stuff sucks. It's really what the camera can do. They, it does it extremely well. The autofocus is done extremely, extremely well. The IBIS is probably the best IBIS I've used on any camera, full frame, APS-C, uh, I haven't used that Olympus camera, but the I, if you you can see the footage, the Ibis is nutty. It's so good. It's so good, and the fact that Canon does have a great 15 to 35 2.8 lens that does have optical stabilization on there, that's such a great little vlogging setup. If you care about image quality, it is a heavy setup. I understand a lot of vloggers. Um, kind of don't want to deal with something like that. Like if they can get that image quality down in like a, you know, RX 100 style body, then sure. But we're still far away from that. I'm just speaking strictly on if you want the best image quality with some of the best IBIS, the best autofocus, you do want to throw a Rode video mic on top. You just want to turn the camera on and get great 4K quality, 10 bit internal, full frame, no crop. This is an amazing camera. It really is. Uh, I'm kind of uh, really kind of turning around on this camera. When I first got it, I was a little bit worried. I was a little bit hesitant. You can obviously see a quality degradation in the normal which is 4K mode compared to the high quality mode. All that being said, I, this camera is turning out to be uh, excellent. It's really turning out to just be a huge upgrade from the EOS R, which was one of my favorite cameras. I'm gonna continue to do these tests. I still have the overheating stress test coming. I still want to do photo tests and I will be doing like a full review, my full conclusionary thoughts on this product. And if I think you should pick it up, if I think you should pick it up over other cameras, kind of where it is in the market. But I've been just very, very happy with what I've been doing with this camera. I haven't really run into many issues other than the card issues that I have with the Hoodman card. I want Canon to hurry up and release a firmware so we can fix some of these bugs. There are some bugs going on. Premiere and Lightroom haven't updated their stuff yet to utilize these files so I'm kind of stuck using like Canon stuff. So I kind of want a lot of that stuff to be worked out before I really do get my final review on it. But overall man, if you care about great autofocus, if you care about 
Great colors just straight out of the camera. If you care about a 10 bit image, full frame, uncropped, if you care about really good IBIS, where you just, you don't have to really worry about a tripod, you don't have to worry about a gimbal. If you care about like the overall usability of a camera more so than the technical specs and the most pristine, sharpest image quality, it's really hard not to recommend this. It's really hard not to recommend this. So far, so far, who knows, maybe, you know, the next week I run into tons of issues and it just can't do anything without overheat. I don't know, we'll see what's going on. All right, so the IBIS test is a success. If you need IBIS, this is the best option. This is the best option. It's the best option on the market, especially full frame. I don't think you can get any better. I don't think you can get any better. And to me, that's a really big pro and a real big advantage for this camera. The fact that the IBIS is that good in video, that's pretty cool. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know down in the comments if you wanna see any other testing. Let me know what you think of this video. Uh, any critiques, criticisms you have of this video, leave them down. Um, and if you care about this kind of stuff, make sure you leave a like and also subscribe if you wanna see more videos on this. All right, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.